This video is brought to you by Charlie Presumed Dead by Anne Heltzel, coming from HMH on June 2nd. In Paris, family and friends gather to mourn the passing of Charlie Price, a young globetrotter presumed dead after a horrible accident. At his funeral, Charlie's two girlfriends, Lena and Aubrey, discover each other's existence. As the trails of Charlie's deception leads the two girls across Europe and Asia, their deepening friendship sustains them in their search for the truth. But, of course, they both have secrets of their own. What will happen when they discover the truth about each other and the truth about Charlie? Find out with Charlie Presumed Dead by Anne Heltzel, coming out June 2nd. Hey guys, Amanda Nelson here, I'm the managing editor of Book Riot, and I'm doing this week's edition of In the Mail Bag. This is a weekly feature where we show you the coolest books that we've gotten in our mail this week, except this time it's not necessarily books we've gotten in the mail, so much as books I picked up while I was at Book Expo America. BEA, Book Expo America, is a large annual trade show that happens in, it's been in New York for the, for the past couple of years, but it will be moving next year. Anyway, it's um, a publishing trade show that starts with Book Blogger Con at the beginning, and then there's BEA for, I think, three days, and then ends with Book Con, which is a more reader-facing event. Um, so BEA is, a, is an industry-facing event. There's a lot of meetings that happen and publishing parties and that kind of thing. And while I was there, I managed to pick up a couple of books that are coming out soon or in the, in the near future. Well, not necessarily in the near future. And a few that have already come out that I wanted to share with you um, and see what you guys think. Actually, so the first year, this was the first year that there was a comic book row at BEA that I can remember. Uh, Boom Studios was there. Their imprint, Boombox, does Lumberjanes, which I'm sure you've heard of on this channel before. Um, Valiant was there, the comic book publisher. I didn't see Marvel or DC, um, but IDW was there, kind of like the smaller um, published image. Image was there with the giant bitch planet um, end cap on the aisle. So like as you're walking down the aisle, the first thing that you see is this big like bitch planet cover, which I just loved. Um, so while I was there, I picked up the first trade of The Woods and also the first trade of Hexed. Um, I hadn't heard of, I'd heard of The Woods, I'd seen it in my comic book shop, I hadn't heard of Hexed, but uh, while I was there, I got to talking to the people in the booth, obviously, and, the, and they were asking me about my tastes in comics, and this is what they recommended to me, and they just had trades that they were giving out, like full trades, and um, Image was giving away first, like, first issues of pretty much everything in their catalog, I think, except I didn't see any for Bitch Planet, but I thought that was really interesting. Um, creepy sci-fi also looks to me maybe creepy fantasy. And yeah, both of those things are in my wheelhouse. So I'm looking forward to reading those. Uh, as far as galleys go, this I didn't technically pick up at BEA, but it was given to me at BEA. Liberty Hardy, who is one of our contributing editors and does our All the Books podcast, brought this to me from Maine where she lived, which was so nice of her. And I don't know if you guys know that this is happening, but The Last Love Song by Tracy Daughtry. This is a biography of Joan Didion. It comes out from St. Martin's in August. I had no idea this was happening, but it's um, very exciting. I love Joan Didion. I want my whole life to be Joan Didion cosplay, if that's at all possible. So it's big. Oh, six, seven, seven hundred 700 pages. Ooh. But anyway, I didn't get this at BEA, but I just wanted to let you all know that this was coming, if you hadn't already heard. So, so a few things I did pick up at BEA. City on Fire by... Garth Risk Halberg. This is from Knopf, and it comes out when? October 13th. This comes out October 13th. This is the big book, like the big publishing book of the year, as far as I can tell. It's about 700 pages. It's a giant galley. The man got, I think it was a $2 million advance, which a seven-figure advance for a novel is not a thing you hear a lot about or hear happening a lot these days, um, especially for, for something this large, because it's not... I just don't know a lot of people outside of the book world who read 700 pages novels. Anyway, um, City on Fire is about New York in the 70s, so if you're into New York novels or, or books set in that time frame, um, you might want to check it out. It looks to be kind of multimedia, I mean like not multimedia in that... that's the wrong phrase. Um, I don't know what the phrase is that I'm looking for, but there, there are like notebook pages, like handwritten journal pages in it, and, and pictures, um, and like 
scrapbook pages in it, along with the normal text. It reminds me a little bit of the night film, that Marisha Peschel, uh, Pessel novel. Um, Anyway, I picked this out 100% out of curiosity. I don't have a thing for New York novels. I don't care about New York novels. Um, I don't have a thing for the 70s. What I do have is a lot of curiosity about what kind of novel gets a man a $2 million advance. So I'm going to check this out. If you've already read it, please let me know. I haven't, I haven't heard anything about it quality-wise that wasn't just about like news or buzz. So if you've already read it, do let me know what you think. I also picked up the new Lauren Groff, Fates and Furies. This comes out September 15th from Riverhead. Lauren Groff wrote Arcadia, which is a novel that I deeply, deeply loved. I think it came out two years ago. Um, and her newest is about a marriage. It's told from two perspectives, the husband and the wife, over the course of 24 years, I think. And there are like secrets and revelations and shifting perspectives and combine all of that with Lauren Groff's ability to write just like a damn fine sentence and I am here for it. So that's Fates and Furies, Lauren Groff. I actually got to meet her at BEA, which was really exciting, um, at a party her publisher Riverhead put on. I went and I spilled wine all over her because that's what I do. I do embarrassing things to authors, like spill beverages down their backs. But she's, she was blonde and it was white wine, so it didn't, it was kind of fine, I guess. Ugh. Ugh. Mortifying. Anyway. This doesn't come out until February, so obviously they're making a big deal out of this. The Queen of the Night by Alexander Chi. This comes out February 2nd. I, ha I haven't read Alexander Chi yet, but I love him on Twitter, and I saw him at the Penn Faulkner Award Dinner when I went to that. He was one of the, the judges, and he, see, he, was very, he was just like so well-spoken and articulate and funny in like a dry way, which is my favorite kind of funny. So um, it, reminds me the, it reminds me a little bit, the synopsis does, of Crimson Pill and the White. It's about a an opera singer in Paris who is famous except she's done, she's done everything except, except have an original role written for her, which I guess is like the pinnacle of fame when you're an opera singer. And when she finally does, she realizes that the libretto is about her life and isn't just about her life, it's about a secret that she has. And there are only four people in the world who are alive now who could have betrayed her. The synopsis says that the, as she searches for the truth, she weaves a web of romance, obligation, and political intrigue. And um, it follows her through her memory as she's trying to figure out what happened from leaving the American frontier, coming to Paris, being a hippodrome writer, being a courtesan, being a debut singer, being a maid to an empress, all these things. That kind of like dark, seedy, underbelly historical fiction, I am here for. So. If that's a thing that you like, check out The Queen of the Night by Alexander Chi when it comes out in February, or if you can get an advanced copy, um, do that. And follow him on Twitter, he's really funny. The last thing I wanted to show you was uh, this really cute book that I picked up from a publisher called The Experiment, which is distributed by Workman. I think it's already out, but it's, an, it's called The Illustrated Book of Bad Arguments. And I love this. Um, part of my job at Book Riot is to moderate comments, and we get so many comments that are just that are like logical fallacies or things that don't make any sense and I spend a lot of time like trying to talk people, uh, trying, trying to talk to people about that kind of thing. Um, but I'm certainly not like, I didn't study logical arguments or philosophy or anything like that in school so I'm not an expert. But, um, but this book is adorable. Like it's just logical fallacies illustrated. Like the genetic fallacy with a little drawing to exemplify what the fallacy means. Affirming the consequent. So this would be a great yeah, appeal to hypocrisy. This would be a great, a great gift for any comment moderator in your life, or anybody who just really likes a good debate, which I do in fact love a good debate. This is by Ali Al Musawi, and it's called An Illustrated Book of Bad Arguments, and that's what the cover looks like. It's adorable. So that's it. I tried to come home with zero books this year. I failed. I came home with a lot. Well, not a lot. Less than ten, which is good for me. If you went to BEA this year, let me know how it went, and if not, um, it's all, it'll be in Chicago next year, so I'll see you there, maybe? Or you could just skip it and come to Book Riot Live in November. Ah, shameless plug. So I'll talk to y'all later.